How often do you find yourself judging others when you don't know the whole story? Hello everyone, this is Andrea with Revitalizing Your Health and today I wanted to come on and talk about changing how we see and respond to others. You know, it's very natural, humanly speaking, to put a judgment on other people. We tend to judge and look at other people in a more negative way than we do ourselves. But grace requires intentional effort. So today we're gonna to be diving into the importance of shifting from judgment to grace. Just as Jesus in the story of the woman caught in adultery. And I like what it says in scripture in John 8, 7. He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. So if you're without sin, you can be the one to cast the first stone. But when Jesus shared this, he didn't just save the woman. He taught the crowd a valuable lesson about examining their own hearts. Because if you recall, he started to write in the dirt the sins of the different people standing around there. And they were being convicted or at least embarrassed at what they seen and they would go away. We often judge and we don't examine our own hearts because if we keep our eyes focused on Christ and we see ourselves as we truly are without Christ, it helps us to look at others in a better light. So I want to go through some steps with you that may help you as well as myself to look more at things before we judge. So step one is to pause before judging. Often judgment comes in split seconds, but what if we just paused before forming a conclusion? Maybe learn a little bit more about the situation. Maybe learn things directly from the person and not from other people around them. So when you feel the urge to judge, take a moment to ask this question. Do I know the whole story? Am I seeing the full picture? So those are a couple questions that are good to ask yourself. So for instance, maybe someone's being a little bit rude. But if you pause and you start to take everything in, you realize they are going through some really hard times right now. And you can definitely give them some grace. We should always have a heart to give grace to people. I think of the story of Hannah in the Bible when she went to the temple and she was sorrowing because she had no children. And she was praying in tears and agony before God in the temple. And she wasn't speaking out loud, but her lips were moving. And the high priest, Eli, he judged her. And he thought that she was a drunken woman. Well, he learned the circumstances and realized, no, she isn't drunk. She's just a sorrowing woman that wants a child. And then he told her that her prayer would be answered and that she would have a child. So he misjudged her, but yet when he learned all the facts, he understood. Step two for us is to reflect on our own imperfections. You know, Jesus challenges us to look inward. He said, he that is without sin, because none of us are perfect. So he is telling us, to look inside and see what our lives are like. So before judging someone else, let's reflect on our own need and the grace that God has given us and the forgiveness he's given us. What have you needed forgiveness for? What have I needed forgiveness for? Those are things that we should be asking ourselves as we reflect. And as we're reflecting on these things, this reflection humbles us and reminds us of the mercy God extends to us daily. And then we have more grace and mercy for those around us. Step three, 
Seek to understand, not judge. So the key thought is here, instead of being quick to judge, be quick to understand. We quickly want to judge people, but rarely do we really want to understand. So we need to not be quick to judge, but we need to be quick to understand. We often don't know what someone's going through, but seek to understand what they're going through. Seek to understand the situations that are happening in their lives. And as we do this, it will open the door to compassion. So replace assumptions with curiosity. Ask questions or simply offer a listening ear. Let people share their stories. And we can often learn a lot about people and what's going on in their hearts and their minds if we just take time to listen. And a lot of times that's what they need. They need someone that cares and will listen. So when you're tempted to judge someone's decisions, take a step back and think about what pressures or challenges they might be facing. We often wonder why maybe someone is staying within an abusive marriage and we can't understand why they are making those decisions but if we can just step back and think about the pressure or the fear or the challenges they're actually going through we can have more sympathy for them and maybe be able to help them in a way that's helpful instead of judgmental I like this verse from the Bible, from Proverbs 18, 13. It says, He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. So let's make sure that we know the story. We understand what's going on before we try to step in and judge. We should really never be judging, but there are times where we need to understand so that we can help them and we need to have the judgment of what God would have us be judging instead of our selfish judgment. Step number four is to stay focused on God's truth. The world's opinion shifts all the time, but God's truth remains constant. And when we're unsure, turn to his word. That's one thing we know no matter what's going on in this world, what's going on with people around us, there's one truth that we always know is true, and that is God's Word. Ask God for discernment through prayer and study of the Bible when you find yourself tempted to judge. We need His help because human nature wants to judge. And one reason we do that is somehow it makes us feel better about ourselves if someone is worse than we are. We need to ask God to be with us and guide us because we want to make sure we're not having selfish intent. And our hearts are deceitfully wicked above all things. Who can know it? Only God can know our hearts. So that is why we really need to stay connected with Him. So step five is reach out to help, not hurt. People who are struggling need support, not judgment. We often want to judge, but what they need is support from us. So ask yourself, I need to ask myself, how can I help this person instead of condemning them? Often, small acts of kindness or even a word of encouragement can make a huge difference in a person's life. We should know that because we've all experienced that when someone has said something encouraging to us and how it uplifts our spirits. You know, if someone's going through a difficult time, offer prayer, practical help, or just a listening ear instead of assuming the worst about their actions. It seems that our human nature always wants to see the worst, and we need to stay aligned with God so that we can see people in a better light than we do. Step six, trust God's plan, even when you don't understand. So sometimes life situations don't make sense and people may act in ways that we don't understand, but we can trust that God is in control. 
When we're tempted to judge or to try to fix situations ourselves, surrender them to God. His plan is greater than we can see, and He works all things together for good. So when we see maybe things in other people's lives and we think, oh, they've made the wrong choice, or oh, they've done this wrong or that wrong, you know, the Lord may have allowed that for a purpose. And he's bringing good into their lives and into the lives of those around them because of their possible mistake. So we need to allow the Lord to work and we can really pray for that person. That's why I really love the verse Romans 8, 28. And it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. God is bringing about good. And we may not always see it, but in the end, we will see it. So trusting God's plan may mean showing compassion where judgment seems much easier. I love this quote by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Judging others makes us blind, whereas love is illuminating. By judging others, we blind ourselves to our own evil and to the grace which others are just as entitled to as we are. That is just such a powerful statement. Choosing love over judgment allows us to see the situation more clearly and respond with the heart of Christ. But when we start judging, it's so true. We, we start blinding ourselves. Love leads to grace and clarity. Judgment keeps us blind to our own need for mercy. So we need to be sure that we're not judging. Let's bow our heads for prayer as we ask God for the strength we need to not be judging, but to see more clearly with love. Dear Father, thank you for the grace you show us every day. Help us to pause before we judge and to reflect on our own need for mercy. Open our hearts to understand others instead of condemning them. Teach us to stay focused on your truth and to trust your plan even when life doesn't make sense. Give us the strength to extend love and help instead of hurt. Lord, may we always reflect your heart of grace in our actions towards others. In Jesus' name, amen. So this week, take intentional steps to focus on grace instead of judgment. Start by pausing before you judge, reflecting on your own need for forgiveness, and seeking to understand those around you. When faced with difficult situations, choose to help and encourage instead of tearing down. Trust that God's plan is bigger than we can see. Let's strive to be known for our love and not how we judge. And until next time, keep healthy and God bless. If in any way you have been blessed by this video, please share, like, and subscribe to help me grow. And in advance, thank you. Thank you.